Hi! So my name's Jacqueline. I'm Natalie. And, um, Rana, um, Rana is my aunt, and she asked me to make this video, um, about our missions. Um, I just got home from my mission in October. I served in California. <laughs> and I just got home in September, and I served in the Georgia Atlanta North Mission. Um, basically, what we just wanted to talk about is we wanted to to kind of talk a little bit about like the realities of a mission um, from the perspective of of two sister missionaries who loved every second of their mission. I loved my mission so, so much, but it was really hard. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess I'll just kind of talk about mine and then you can talk about yours. Okay. okay. So I served in Long Beach, California, and um, a lot of missionaries who have mental disorders like depression and anxiety and bipolar and stuff like that, they send a lot of them to Southern California um, because we have LDS Family Services in our mission and the medical care is really, really accessible in California. And so we get a lot of missionaries who have um, depression. And so every single one of my companions had depression on my mission. And it was really, really hard for me. I don't have depression. I don't suffer from depression. But, um, but I know what it feels like now because all my companions had it. And um, it was really hard. Um, there were days that I didn't even get to go out and do missionary work because my companions couldn't get out of bed. Um, there were days that, like, sometimes I would question, like, I don't know, my purpose. I would question why I was even on a mission because I felt like um, what I was supposed to be doing, I wasn't out doing. And something that I realized while I was experiencing this was that um, sometimes your mission isn't for your investigators. Sometimes it's for your companions. Sometimes it's for you. Well, it's all for you, but um, sometimes you're, who you're supposed to be helping is, um, is your companions. And that was one thing that I really learned, like, on my mission. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I served in the Bible Belt, and so I... My faith was questioned every day. Every day someone would tell us that we were a cult or that we were going to hell and that sort of thing. And the rejection is really hard. I think before you serve a mission, you think about, like, all the movies that you see about missionary work, but how they go out and people, like, everyone wants to talk to them, everyone wants to book a Mormon, and it just sounds so awesome. And that's not the reality. You find those people that are prepared, but more often your days are spent. We did a lot of tracting where we would just knock on, like, go to the neighborhood and knock on doors. And um, maybe one out of that whole neighborhood wants you to come back. And um, maybe one out of, you know, five neighborhoods actually you end up teaching. And so that's really hard. And I always said, you know, they say how a mission is the best two years or the best 18 months um, for sisters. And it's not because it's the most fun or the most exciting or the time easiest. of your life or the easiest. It's not a party all the time. Um, it's the best 18 months because you grow up so much and you learn so much. And the way you learn is through trials and through the refiner's fire and um, through really having to just like put your, your nose to the ground and, and just do your best. I think like the biggest thing that I learned on my mission was, well, not the biggest thing, but one of the things that I learned on my mission was, um, was like how to like trust in God. And, like, how to really rely on him and, like, understand that, like, he has a plan and sometimes it's not always, like, according to our plan. And sometimes we just have to trust that, like, God's plan is the correct one. Um, I, so, like, I never wanted to go on a mission. Like, that was never in my plans. I was, so, I grew up in Idaho and I had all Mormon friends. Like, I never really, like, struggled with my testimony. It was always just, like, something... That was just like wasn't in, ingrained in me, and I just did. And um, and then my family moved to Virginia and lived there for two years while I was going to school at BYU Idaho, and um, so I didn't really experience that life either. But I did go back and live there during the summer for like six months. And while we were there, we had sister missionaries in my ward, and we um, we did a lot with them because my dad was the ward mission leader. And while I was with them, I realized that I like had this really weird love for missionary work that I, like, didn't know existed, and I had talked to, like, I mean, do you remember when we lived together, and you were like, I want to go on a mission, I was like, heck no, I'm not doing that, <laughs> I did not want to go on a mission, anyway, so I went back to school in August of 2012, 
or September of 2012, and I, like, could not get the thought out of my brain. I was like, I feel like I should serve a mission, but, like, I, well, I don't know why I'm thinking about it. I'm only 20 years old. And then in October, President Monson made the age change. And it was, like, such an answer to my prayers, but I still didn't want to go. And it was, like, something that I, like, didn't want to do. And, um, but, like, I remember, like, even after feeling like, oh, okay, like, I should go, I was still, like, kind of, like, denying that prompting because I didn't want to. And, um, I remember one day I was walking home from church here at school and I just like felt so clearly that I was supposed to go on a mission and I just like started to cry. And it was like so clear. Like I, like that was the first time I'd ever really felt like God had truly answered my prayers and like I could feel it. And, thanks. and, um, anyways, and so I like knew for a fact that I was supposed to go on a mission and that was honestly like. <laughs> like the biggest reason that I like stayed because there were so many times that like mm -hmm. so much stuff that I went through and like things that I experienced that if I didn't know for sure that I was supposed to be there, to I would have been like, <laughs> see ya. Yeah. I'm leaving, man. Mm -hmm. I remember my first week in the MTC. I remember my second day in the MTC. I was like, what the heck did I get myself into? This is not fun. This is not fun <laughs> at all. I do not like this. But I just kept thinking back to like that prompting that like, no, like, this is where God needs you. Mm -hmm. And, like, I knew that I needed to serve a mission. And I think that that's something that, like, if I could give anybody advice about, like, going on a mission, that would be my advice. Is that, like, you don't have to go. Mm -hmm. You are a girl. You do not have to go. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say is that I feel like after the age change, especially, a lot of people are pushing girls to go and almost looking at it as like, well, now you, it's your responsibility too. But that responsibility is given to the priesthood, not the sisters. And so it's so important that you find out for yourself what the Lord wants you to do. Because you don't have to. Um, and it's not a bad decision not to. You know, there are many things the Lord has planned for each of us. And some of you and some of us are meant to serve missions and some aren't. And you just have to receive that answer for yourself. Because if you don't get that answer and then you go out on a mission just because well, everyone else is like, it's going to be hard. You're not going to want to be there. You're going to want to go home. Yeah. And like that being said, like I loved my mission. Like mm -hmm. my, like that was literally one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my entire life. And I like, I mean, I love those people. I love California so much. I love the people of Long Beach. I love my investigators. I love the members I worked with. I love the missionaries I got to serve with. Like I'm so, 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 so grateful every single day that I got to meet those people and that I got to have those experiences that I did because I learned so much. I learned so much more than I ever could have learned in any other stage of life, in any other experience. Like, I'm just like so, so grateful that I got to go. And like, you don't have to serve, but like, if you have the desire to, then go for it. Like a mission is like the best thing that you could ever do. Um, it's the hardest also. And it's <laughs> discouraging sometimes. And you're just like, why is this? Why did I decide to do this? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it really, it really is like, I'm like so grateful for my mission. Yeah. And be preparing now like you are going to serve a mission. Because if you end up, then you'll be prepared. And if you don't, then you'll be prepared to have a family or to bless your roommates or your family or your friends. So just right now, be preparing to, to serve a mission someday. So that way you're ready, whatever the Lord asks you to do. And that is all. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening.